Hey, Ronnie, let me ask you this. I'm looking over some of these survey things here. All right? Okay. Let me ask you this. Have you ever stolen something from a store? Sure. All right. Do you think um, you're in the majority there, or the minority? What percentage of uh, the population do you think have stolen from a store? All right. That's interesting. Now, of course, most people do it at a younger age for that thrill. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say more men have stole, uh, have stole stuff than women. See, women probably pull the number down, although some of them steal clothes. Right, Winona. I'll say 28% of people have take have shoplifted. All right, yes. Taken something intentionally from a store. Right. I don't think I've done armed robbery, which not a lot of people even have the guts for, or the composition. But I'll say uh, 28% have uh, shoplifted. Ronnie, you're just about right there. 29% of wow. the population. You know people, my wow. friend. I like that one. You know people. What is that book yet? This is Are You Normal? Yeah. Are you normal? So it just gives a Apparently bunch of... I am. Yeah. You're very normal when it comes to... No, you shoplift it, right? Uh, yes, I've shoplifted. I'm sure Rory has. I don't even have to ask. Yeah. I see it in his eyes. Hawk, I don't know. I'm going to say, you know, I can see Hawk stealing office supplies, but I don't know if he'd ever went into a store. I can't imagine Hawk having the composure. Yeah. You know, he's such a nervous Norvis anyway. Yeah. Yeah, as a kid, I used to steal uh, gum and candy and stuff All right, like so that. that's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, all the time, Hershey bars and bubble gum. Now you're getting carried away. And I, yeah, I, know, I had candy in my desk, and now I don't. And now I know Billy probably has. I just look at him and know that he's a born thief. I actually, and uh, when I was shoplifting as a kid, we'd all be little kids. We would steal uh, albums, record albums, not even CDs, really? <laughs> but big albums that we'd either put under our coats or you try to put one down your pants. And I'm leaving a, a record store, and the guy goes, Hey, stop, son. He stops me, right? And he goes, Is that a record in your pants? And I go, Well, it's big. A record I don't know. But it's large. Nice. <laughs> Here's Rob. Rob, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Rob. What's up, guys? Yeah, buddy. check it in. All right, buddy. Hoo -ha. Hey, um... No, I think that number is much, much higher than 29%. I don't know any kid that hasn't stolen, like, a pack of gum or a candy bar at some point in their life from a store. I, I agree with that, but then you go back and you think women. Well, you know, that. What I, I know a lot of girls that steal little makeup products. They will steal that. Like that. Yeah, they will steal that. And Usually I all I steal is a kiss. I think it's makeup a lot more than clothes as well. I know growing up where it was warm, we could never hide anything under our coats. We didn't have them. You had to steal things that would fit in your pants. <laughs> Do you wish you didn't say that now? <laughs> yes. I just bowed my head in shame. Mike, you're on run of fuzz. Hey, Mike. Mike. Mikey. Mike, do you want to talk on the radio? No, he no. doesn't. Uh, Kim, Kim, you're on run of fuzz. Hey, Kim. Hello? Yeah. Hi, I'm so glad to hear you're on. Will you stay on during the day? No, we will not. Why? Because we're bringing new, super terrific, fantastic programming to WNEW. And you're going to love it. Uh, this, you know, you'll love it. The Sith Lords are working on it right now <laughs> down the hall. Uh, I believe there are finalists now, Fezzi, from what I understand, finalists to become the new shows on WNEW. Oh, nice. Hmm. And as soon as they know what we're doing, uh, it looks like Fez and I will... Uh, not only leave days, but we'll also leave nights. Oh, really? no, no, no. They should pull the audience. <laughs> when they find out what they really want on this station, we'll, we'll be out. We'll the audience. We're the ones oh, that know geez. what we want. Yeah, I know. And but... you guys got to compete at night with baseball games and summer activities. Hey, I don't want to be in a place where Fez can't be Fez. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to come here and try to be somebody else. I don't know if I can. Maybe just being myself hasn't worked out for me. Being crazy hasn't worked. I guess New York isn't ready for Ron and Fez, the real Ron and Fez. How can I be the mean, mean, How can I be the mean, 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 I think so. You guys are cool. I like you. I'm glad to hear you on right now, and right. I hope you stay on during days. All right, thanks a lot, Jeez. Thank you, Kim. Show. <laughs> Talking about stealing. Yeah. Been caught stealing. <laughs> hey, uh, Gene, Gene, you're on Run Fest. Hey, Gene, when I was when I was 14, I used to steal cartons of cigarettes from the path marks and the uh, wall bounds and sell yeah. them for like five, six bucks a cart. I wish you were still around now, kid. 
all all the time. I mean, and people I take my bicycle, get a receipt from a little drug store next door for a carton of cigarettes, then go into the pet mark and steal a carton of cigarettes and sell them. It was such an easy way to make money when you're 14 years old. And then from a video store, the biggest thing I ever got away with was um, they sold like those games. Those and the Mattel and television was popular back then. I walked out with the whole console, the whole Mattel and television. All right, thanks, man. Sit. All right. Thank you, Gene. No problem. For your life of crime, wow. your dedication. I'm talking to pretty boy Floyd. <laughs> uh, Jason, you're on a fence. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. What's All up, right, Jason? I got, I got a question. Um, if it's stealing, if you go purchase something and they give you more money back and you don't say anything to them. Let's see. That's actually a good one. Uh, I've done that plenty of times. I mean, I have. I, I, you know, I, I, first of all, we know it's immoral. If you follow any kind of morality, it is immoral. Right. Like stealing. Is it things. actual stealing, though? Well, let's put it this way. Suppose someone uh, sends you a check to your house. Suppose yeah. American Express makes some kind of screw up. They send you a check for eighteen thousand dollars. It's in your name. You cash it. Guess what? You owe them that money. So that yeah. would be stealing. Yeah, and you're going to have to get that money back. Right. You have to return that. So by by that thing, you would probably be arrested for stealing. At the same thing, whether it's eighteen thousand dollars or eighteen dollars or eighteen cents, it's still basically the same moral crime, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you're a you're a. Thief. I mean, I've been I've been to the movie theaters and the morons give me I give them a twenty dollar bill they give me twenty five back. You know. You know, and wow. I mean, actually, a lot of people who do that. Uh, for a living where they'll go, you know, they'll show a 50, they'll hand a 20, you know, they make sure that the kid sees them with a 50, they flash the 50, and then as they're, and then they quick make another mold, and they're handing the kid a, a 20, why is somebody's even talking to that kid? Guys will like, work together on it. Like the movie The Grifters. Yeah, The Grifters is uh, is pretty much like that. It's definitely a grift, yeah. I right, thanks. And you end up getting beat up with uh, oranges wrapped in a towel. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Nicole, Nicole, you're on manifest. Turn your radio down. Nicole, Wonder Boy should tell oh, okay. you. Turn Hi. your radio down. Wonder, Boy? Wonder Boy on the phone. Yeah. Um, All right, you, I'm gonna right. have to knock you off because it's too damn annoying. Now have Wonder Boy fix that on the phones. All right, if he's the one working them out there, I don't know what the problem is. Let me check to see who's on the phone. Phones. The person you're trying to reach has a back covered in moles. Please try your call again. Jeez, that is Wonder Boy. Yeah, so he is on the phones. All right. The person you're trying to reach has a back covered in moles. Please try your call again. So, all right, so that is our on our end. Yeah. That's a problem on our lines. Okay. All right, let's move on. Give me another one of those. All right, let's see here. Do you eat in any particular order? From the Are You Normal? I start with breakfast and work my <laughs> way straight through a uh, late night snack. This is if you, when you have a meal, if you eat like one thing at a time or in a distinct pattern. All right. Now, I know you eat that way. This I do. I, have, I will start out with, if I have, let's say, a meat, a vegetable, and potato. Yeah. I will eat the vegetable. I will eat the potato. I will eat the meat. Is there any reason for that? Not that I can think of, other than I like to finish one job before starting the next. And usually, I'll even do this too, Ronnie's seen it, I'll save my drink for last. That freaks me out. I won't have my beverage till I'm done with my meal. And, uh, alright, now do you do it in the same way? Let's suppose you get, uh, corn, and you get french fries, and a hamburger, and a Coke. Tell me what you would do. Alright, corn, french fries, hamburger, and a Coke. I'm, a Coke. I'm probably going to eat the fries first there. Okay. If so, it's fries, they're going to go first. And you eat all your fries first. Mm-hmm. Then I'll get into the corn. Yeah. Then that burger will be last, food-wise, and then the Coke. as a nice, refreshing dessert. Sure. I understand that. Now, here's what my problem is with that. And I know when I, when I first saw you do that, I thought it was freakish. Then I found out other people do it, which just shocked me. Here's my problem with that, Fez. Number one, suppose you're not all that hungry. You end up eating your vegetable and not your entree. I've actually run into that yeah. where I've gotten like a sandwich and fries, big order of fries, yeah. filled up on the fries and didn't want the sandwich. Saved the sandwich for later and so ended up doing that. That's that's to me that would be painful. 
Two, the other problem with this, I don't think you've really eaten a hot hamburger in your life, the way a hamburger is supposed to be eaten. And you know cold food doesn't bother me. I would have not to because of the way you eat. Because if I get a pizza, I'll go stick a couple slices in the freezer for a little bit to get it cool. All right, Fezzy, this on I mean, the... cold. Now, um... I'm I'm reading something from the Horde King, and unlike Billy and Al, you don't panic when the Horde King points things out. I love to hear the Horde King's advice. Uh, here's what he says. Finishing one food before starting another, common in obsessive people. The finishing the task is more important than the actual task of eating. Here's what interests me about you, Fez. I have never thought of eating a meal as a job or a task <laughs> or something that I have to do. To me, it's just pure pleasure. I do have that thing where I feel I have to finish. That clean plate club syndrome. Right. I always feel I have to finish everything on the plate, and I'm going to finish it one job at a time. I think with the drink thing, yeah. I think what that is, that's from being a kid. And if I finish, if I, you know, sit down at the table and you drink all your drink before you finish your dinner, we never got a refill. And we were done. So I learned to just save the drink because I, I was going to need that. See, luckily in my family, my mom had the bottomless glass of iced tea. Oh, nice, Lucky. Where she literally would say, now remember, it's a bottomless glass. So <laughs> refills are free. So your mom would say, hey, no more milk for you. Right, yeah. If you finished your drink, you weren't getting a refill. Because you just keep drinking and not eat your food. All right, now, okay, now I understand that. How about your brothers and sisters? Do they eat in your crazy way? Mm, my older brother, Corky, does. Same exact way? Yeah, he's pretty separate on everything. I think uh, my little brother and my sister, I think they eat like humans. Now, do you think, uh, like the Horde King says, that it's somewhat of an obsessive thing with you? Could you break it? Could you eat mm. a mixture for us one day? Could you go from succotash to french fry to a bite of steak? Wow. That would be weird for me. Uh, you know what? That would make it all one big plate of food that I was trying to get down. It would just seem, even though it's the same amount, right? it would seem all like, it would seem like a lot more food. So you worry that you won't finish the job. That's your concern in life. Yeah. You won't finish your food job. Not the fact that... You could eat as much as you want or as little as you want, Fez. I don't care. Sure. But as you can see, Ronnie, I'm getting the job done. Wow, that sound was terrible. <laughs> that sound was frightening. Let me lower the mic. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. All right, here's I'm Brian. getting the job done. Brian says he eats the same way you do. Brian, you're on Ronnie Fez. Rock Band Fez, 11081 here. Hey, Brian. Hoo -ah. I'm so glad I get to listen to you guys twice a day now. You are yeah. nice. Yeah, we're just oh. I, you guys crack me up. Everything you say is funny. Yeah, that, that part is true. <laughs> that is true about us. <laughs> See, stuff like that. It just cracks me up on a daily basis. Twice. Listen, I eat the exact same way Fez does. I have never heard of anyone else doing this. Sometimes I take it by color. Like the most green has to go down first because I like that the least. Interesting. Interesting. Green beans, then carrots, because I don't necessarily like carrots, but I don't like green beans either. So... Uh, I save the meat for last because I know that I like the meat the most, and I'll finish that. And it ties into the clean plate syndrome also. But, Brian, do you always clean your plate, or do you find yourself with a beautiful filet mignon still sitting there because you filled yourself up on tater tots and string beans? I will never leave a filet mignon sitting anywhere. Amen, brother. Uh, so you'll <laughs> always keep eating. You guys will just not stop like a bull weevil until you are finished. Right. Well, sometimes not a I'll plague. Find, sometimes I'll find that I'm starting to slow down, so I'll, I'll I'll leave maybe half a baked potato and move on to something else. Now, can you do but that, Fez? I'm, I'm finishing that meat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Brian. I'll tell you what. If I think, if I give myself a standard at the beginning of the meal, sure. Of uh, you know, I can eat the ba potato, but I don't have to eat the whole skin and everything else. I can let myself out of some things. Don't you worry that you're not uh, uh, experiencing food the way it's supposed to be with, like, the mixtures of foods together? I'm using it purely, purely as a functional thing. That's so sad. <laughs> and all because your mom was chintzy with the beverages, I wonder. I think that's where it started. Did she stay on you? If you didn't clean your plate, were you in trouble? Yeah, you had to eat your food. Yeah. Hmm. 
No yeah, you, chance, could, you can waste the food, that's for sure. No chance you can stand up and go, look, I don't care what the rules are. I need some more Kool-Aid. <laughs> and I'm willing to pay for it. That wasn't going to happen very often. And, Ronnie, I'll tell you what. All right, you would think something like a stew would throw me off, right? Everything's mixed together. It's all in one bowl. It's yeah. One, one big pot of stuff. I do it with a stew, too. You pick through. I will eat the potatoes out first. I will eat the meat next. And then, like, the carrots or whatever last. Um, that's odd. Yeah. And I think that the king is uh, right about the fact that you're obsessive. Is it obsessive or compulsive? Both. Really? Both. Great. You're a sick, sick young man. <laughs> that's the way I eat. Do you want to break it? No, I would, enjoy my food. With the thoughts... Ronnie... I enjoy my food. Yeah. I don't think it's where it's a too big of a problem. I'm eating the food. Yeah, but you're not eating maybe correctly. Maybe you're eating too many starches. <laughs> well, I'll give you that one. Uh, Jay. <laughs> Jay, you're on Ron Fez. Hello, Jay. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. But I... I was just, uh, want to let you know about my stepfather, the craziest man in the world, will not eat all the food. He's got to put, like, a potato on his plate. And that's it. Eats the mashed potato or the baked potato and then won't have anything else until he's finished with that. All right. So he, uh, uh, well, at least Fez keeps all his stuff on the plate at the same no. time. Yeah. No. I was saying Fez is, would be like Fez. He puts the French fries on his plate. He eats them. He moves over his vegetable. He eats them. Then he puts the meat on his plate and he eats them. Yeah. That's it. He won't, he won't do it all at once. All right. I, I drives my mother crazy. Yeah. I don't blame her. <laughs> he, he, you know, can't cook for him for nothing. He's like a maniac. Okay. And I, and I love you guys. I listen to you all the time. Thank you, brother. Thank all you right, very brother. much, Jay. Take care. Here's Selena. Selena, you're on uh, with Rana Fez. Hey, Selena. Hello? Yeah, Selena. I just want to know, what happens when Fez goes to a buffet? Yeah. Does everything Fez. get all mixed up? Or... Do you feel like you have to finish the entire buffet when you see the food? <laughs> no, I don't have to eat a whole buffet. <laughs> no, I don't mind food touching on my plate. I'm sick, but I don't have it that bad. Right. But I will, if I go to a buffet, I will eat one thing at a time that I got off the buffet. But you never, like, eat something else and then have to go back because it's so good? You see what you're saying there? Like, I'll go back for a second helping of that. But is it. But then you just move on. What? That's well, you, it. Like, once you finish eating that one thing, then you just move right, on. Let's to yes, like the bull weevils. Yes. <laughs> Hi, right, but here's, here's what she's saying, Fez. All right, let's suppose you have a couple of shrimp. All right. Uh, you have uh, a fish. Okay. And you have carrots on your plate. All right. You eat your carrots. Yes. Then you have your shrimp, and it's yes. time for your fish, and you're thinking. Man, I only got three shrimp, and them some bitches were good. When do you go back for shrimp? After fish, or do you finish all your shrimp together? Um, no, I'll go back after the fish. So you have to finish the, all, all on your plate. Yeah, then it's See, a new plate and a new gig. Selena, here's what he's saying. He okay. sees that plate as his map of the world. That's his universe, <laughs> that plate. That's his job, mm -hmm. that this uh, mother figure is still hovering over him, hugely hovering over him. And you have to finish that to feel good about yourself. Yeah. But every plate is a new map. Now, if I... Yeah, go, every plate's a new map. Right. Now, Selena, if I go get something on the buffet and I go, ooh, that's awful, then it's just off the... T yeah, it's done. I don't have to finish that. I'm not going to eat something I don't like. And I can move on to something else. All right, Billy Staples wants to come in and add something. I hate to ever do that, but he does. Uh -huh. All right, thanks, Selena. Thanks. Here comes Billy Staples. What you got, big man? I'm just kind of the opposite. I have to try to get as many different kinds of food on my fork as possible. I'll never eat one food alone on my fork. Uh, what would you put on your fork? Really what? tons of fun. Well, like, they, they actually had to staple his stomach <laughs> because of this obsession. Because of wanting too many different foods on one forkful. Yeah, it's like 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 at Thanksgiving, I'd have some turkey, piece stuffing, maybe some green beans. I'll try to get it all on one fork because I don't like the taste of foods individually. I like the combo, like mixing them all up. Uh, you've never actually told us what is on the fork at any one time. 
Well, like, uh, like I'll put a piece of turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and maybe try to balance some green beans on it or something on the You're top. You're an animal. So you, your joy is getting everything on your plate, a representative of each thing on your plate, on your fork. Why even that bother on the fork? Why not, why not just take it all and put it in a blender and drink it? And have it. So, how do we look? Chubby? You know what we're saying, Billy? Yeah, but then you'd lose the texture. Yeah, and, have and, a Thanksgiving smoothie for your fat self. They actually had to staple you. Well, yeah, but I still do it, but to a lesser extent. I just can't eat one food alone. Right, you're having a slice of pizza, a burger, and a malted all on one forkful at a time. Even if I take a bite of a burger, it has to be with a french fry. <laughs> oh, you're sick. It has to be with a whole potato. You're actually frying up a 10-pound bag of potato and counting them each as individual fries. No, even something individual like a shrimp or something. You know, like I'll have some lettuce with it. Yes, or, with a shrimp, right, you have to have a steak with every bite. With a steamed shrimp, you're going to put, like, potato or lettuce with it. Uh, Something, whatever you're, I have. You're missing out on food. You can't just eat a shrimp. But, and it has to be loaded with cocktail sauce to begin with. You're filthy. I'd rather be like me, Ronnie. I, you know, both. Uh, to me, I feel like I'm in the land of freaks. And no matter which direction I go in. Food freaks. That's why when we bought forks, we had, I had to make sure we got the really big ones. <sighs> he has to buy larger you're, forks. You're eating with a pitchfork. Yeah, I turned down those three-pronged forks. They don't work. All right, here's Kevin. He's got uh, Fezzi's disease. Hey, Kevin, you're on my fest. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hey, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Hey, uh, after 11 years in the military, I'm same as Fez. I got to eat all one thing. Drives my wife nuts. Now, and since it was on trays, I can't have it touching. Uh, I understand the military trays, but in the military, do they make you eat all your potatoes at one time? <laughs> don't make you. No. They they do or they don't? They don't, no. Oh, because I couldn't be in the military if that was it. I can't sit there and ignore my entree. Kevin, that's why TV dinners are the best. They come with their own compartments. Absolutely. Oh, by the way. And then you have all your little jobs done, Fez. Yes. And then mommy won't hurt. And I'll tell you what, those giant, those jobs are lined up smallest to biggest. You know, the peas and the mashed potatoes are smaller jobs in a TV dinner. And hey, then guys. your big uh, meatloaf. Yeah. What is it, Kev? Uh, also, I tried to call you yesterday. Oh, we were here. The, I, I thought it was a replay until I, by the time I realized that it wasn't a replay, it was too late. You had moved on. I had a suggestion for the for a new show. Oh, what's that? Unfortunately, it only lasts one night. It'd be Rory, Al, and Joe Pooh. Rory and Rory and Joe would kill Al the first night. Thank you, Kevin. And feel free to call on middays. You're a midday caller, my friend. Yeah, enjoy the middays. Yeah, you're a midday caller. You should have gotten out with that whole army compartment tray, dinner tray. All right, we got to take another break. Yes, I we like, do. I like these kind of things. Well, you find out who's normal. Yeah, we find out who's normal. And I guess your thing is not bad for you, Fez. I mean, oh, you never even gave us the... I was just going to say. Yeah. All right, what percentage of the population do you think eat in a specific order, that is, one thing at a time or in a definite pattern? Oh. <sighs> You know, but see, here's the thing. I don't know whether that's the same as you. Because I also think that there's another thing, Fez, where, I mean, you could say that, that Billy eats in a pattern as right. sloppy as it is. And also, I think there are certain people who go, I have to have bite of meat, bite of potatoes, bite of vegetable. You're bite making the, the round? Yeah. yeah, you're making the rounds, which is another type of obsession. So when you start to add them all up, I'm going to say only about 20% of us are as sick as you. All right, here's the percentage. 31% of us wow. eat in a distinct order, whether that's a specific pattern or all of one item at a time. 31%. You know, I'll tell you something right now. And out of everything you do, the fact that you don't have liquid, you don't have a beverage till the end, freaks me out the most. And that used to kill me about my dog when I was little. That a dog would eat all of its dog food and then turn to his water. And I would try to take my dog and go, please, you're going to choke to death. I would try to pull his head over and drink some water. Well, I'm sure that was better for the dog. And another thing I would be saying to my mom is, like, can he have something better than water with this meal? Already his food's disgusting. Now you're going to make him have plain water instead of some nice, uh, nice cola? You're giving the dog some nice iced tea. All right, we'll take a break. 
877-692-1027. I want to do some more of these when we come back, though, Fizz. All right, we will this do might, that then. I, I like this kind of stuff. If I honestly would stick in, stay in school for even a second, I would try to do this kind of work. But I'm not going to uh, study anything. <laughs> Are you normal? We'll find out. Run a Fizz. 877-692-1027. We'll be with you uh, till 2 o'clock, and uh, well, then we start in the best of O&A. O&A do their show, and then we're back at 7 live tonight to bring you more live entertainment. Are we going to be able to at least finish the week, Fuzz? Oh, yeah. I keep we're looking good. at it one day at a sh- one show at a time. I think we'll probably make some adjustments, and I think we'll be fine. Fire Billy? We're going to fire Billy, that's good. for sure. He's gone. Good. All right, give me one more of uh, Are You Normal games. I like to play these. Okay. Would you rather end up in a retirement home or die quickly? No doubt at all, I'll die quickly. Then grow old and have to be put away. I would have rather died quickly at 15 (laughs) than grow old and suffer in a retirement home. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the kind of retirement home where you're not healthy and everything's not working good. Not like... You know, and I don't even like healthy people that they treat like babies. I'd have a rough time with that. Yeah, the nursing home. Right, and I yeah. don't want that. Right. Tubes in me and stuff like that. I'd rather go out in a blaze of glory shooting it out with the cops in the street. Yeah, my grandma just turned 96 a few months ago. And, you know, she was pretty vivacious for right. a long, long time. Well, she's at the point now where she's on the oxygen. Yeah. And that sort of thing. She's no longer enjoying it. Yeah, right. She's sitting in a chair, doesn't have the the wind to do anything. And I think most people would go my way, too, Fizz. All right, what percent would you say? I'll say 68% would rather go out in a blaze of glory than be stuck in a retirement home suffering. Ronnie, it's actually a little higher, uh, according to this, 78%. Want 78? That, want that dead instantly. And, uh, Rather and, than a lingering, long age, natural causes, drawn out deal. Well, you know, it's no longer natural causes because a lot of this stuff, these people would have died of natural causes, but we're keeping them alive slowly on different machines and operations. But I thought that there would be more people that would just be so afraid of death they wouldn't want to deal with it. Now, they said, actually, the way this is written up, they said, now, 78% would rather be hit by a bus or die from a fast-acting disease than end up in the nursing home. Fast-acting to act, and I'd rather have. <laughs> and they said this is despite the fact that two-thirds of our population always say they want to live to see 100. Yeah, I think people would love to stay alive long enough to see Minority Report and all the wackiness that's coming down. That's got to be thrilling to suddenly see weird things happening with the, the world that you never would have dreamed as a kid. Yeah, a couple of years ago, Grandma said that she she just wanted to really live to see that millennium that people keep talking about. And she's still here. <laughs> and she ain't going nowhere. 877-692-1027. All right, give me another one, Fess. All right. Let's see here. Let me give you this one. All right. This is an average one, Ronnie. Mm-hmm. All right. What is the average amount of times a day a person swears? Well, you got to figure some people don't swear at all. Some people, you know, use words like poo and stuff like that, which I hate. <laughs> Other people like me, uh, it's just phenomenal how much I swear. Yeah, there's some foul mouths and some sailors out there. I'm going to say 16. 16 times a day. The average amount of times the Americans cuss, each American, 16 times a day. Wow. You know people. Yeah, I think I do. You... 16 exactly. Yep. An average of 16 times a day. I'm sure. Someone's dropping a curse word. I think if if it's just us sit around talking, I'm sure I say at the F word 16 times in any one conversation. In the span of a uh, half hour? Right. Just letting it fly. All right, give me another one, Fuzzy. Keep them going. All right. Keep them flying. Let me ask you this one. Yeah. All right, let's see here. All right, the average, uh, how many, a percentage on sure. this one? All right, of the population, when approached by a homeless person, actually give something to that person. When approached on the street by a Every homeless person. Every time or has done it in their life? Because I'm sure all close to 100% of the people 
have done it in their life. But I will say this. I used to go out of my way to stop, talk to a person that had a problem, whatever, when I lived in the suburbs. Because you'd only really find that homeless person begging about once every four months. So I might stop, talk to them. Now that I'm in a place where there's a lot more homeless people, no, I can't do it. Nor do nor do I feel good because I've seen enough scams now, too. Oh, which, yeah. Which will turn you off to some legitimate people. There's people got some nice gimmicks out there. Mm, so I'll say... And see, here's another thing. I will always give money, even now, to somebody who's doing a dance or playing an instrument. They'll always get money out of you? Yes. I always try and give them a buck. Here's here's another reason why on that. I feel that if you're singing a song, you're doing a dance, you're juggling, you're adding to the enjoyment of the city. All right. So you're willing to pay for that entertainment? I'll pay for the entertainment because I know that the person's trying something. Now, someone who's just is, you know... Moaning like, I'll tell you what, because the guy in front of the pickle bagel has been there all week. He acts like his neck is broken because he's so worn down. And he just has his hat out and he's moaning. And in two days, he hasn't changed that state. I know it's an act. Oh, right. Yeah, he's not looking up. He's not as asking. He's right. just got a hat oh, in his hand. Oh, oh, God, someone help. And he's got a hat out. And, uh, you know, that could happen to a human being where they feel that freaked out. For a minute, but he's been going now for 48 hours. Yeah, you're not going to survive. If you're in that bad of shape. And I feel like <laughs> if I throw him a bucket, he's snickering and he's laughing at me. Where if a guy is doing a funny dance and he's, he's moving around. Like if a homeless guy has a, you know, a bad, if a homeless guy had a kazoo, I'd give him a dollar more than if he asked for a dollar. Than if he was just begging, please help me. Yeah. Wow. So we're saying every time a homeless guy comes up, how, how many people? Yeah. I'll say it's fairly low. I see people walk by them all the time. I'll say 8%. All right. This, according to this, 34%. Again, they're not city people. No. They are not city people. So I think Because all right, you watch a homeless guy. Do you see 100 people walk by with 34 stopping to give him a dollar? Never. The guy would be filthy rich. He'd be Donald Trump. I think they're averaging in those overpass people. That are like all throughout the country that, you know, you drive up on. You know what? I used to give to them a lot more until every overpass they were at. Then it gets crazy. You know, it was like if it was one guy going, oh, I need I need help. You would go, oh, my God, here's an awful thing. But if you're going now to every corner and they're collecting like it's the firehouse, you know that they're ripping you off. 877-692-1027. Matt, you're on Rana Fest. Hey, Matt. Yeah, um, a long time ago, a friend of mine, a homeless guy comes up and is like, you got any spare change? So my friend goes, can you do anything? So uh, the guy's like, I don't know, I don't know. So uh, so my friend's like, well, why don't you stand on your head? I'll give you five bucks. You can't use your hands. Just stand on your head, five bucks. So the guy did it, and we each gave him, oh, five bucks a piece. Guy made 15 bucks in about five minutes. I what if he couldn't stand on his head? Nothing. You weren't going to give him anything or wait till he did something else? Uh, I, I don't know. He completed the task. All right, but see, there's a, there's a superior thing to what you're doing. Well, where I can make this guy do something. Where my thing is, hey, if a guy has an act, yeah, I'll throw him a buck. But I'm not going to say, hey, I also now I want you to stand on one foot and start rubbing your belly for a buck. Well, Ronnie, your guy's already doing his act. Right, that's his, it's choice. his choice. It's his choice. Now, what I'll do is I'll pick one day if I'm going out in the city... I'll pick one day where, like, maybe once a month, where I hit every homeless person I see. Not physically, yeah. but with a buck. You know, and I'll just do one. If I know I'm out and I'm walking around, if you catch me on that day, that's the good day, I'll throw you a buck. And then I'll wait, Poor you know. Lord King is right. You are an obsessive <laughs> maniac. It's all or nothing. Now, what makes you pick that day? What makes you pick it's, it's Fezzy gives a buck day? Oh, if it's a day where I know I'm going to be doing a lot of walking around. So how often? Is it once a month? Is it's, it... it's basically about once a month. Hmm. You know, walking through Times Square, whatever I need to do. Yeah. Here's uh, Jake. Jake, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Jake. But I, but I, I, I work in Newark. There's a, there's a black guy that comes up to me at least once a week with the same story that he's trying to get to Trenton with his family, and he needs another five hours for the train. He's, he's must have used the same story with me about 
15 times already. It happens <laughs> all the time. If you know, from uh, living in Manhattan, and I never really saw, you know paid attention to it before, but I now know a lot of uh, homeless people that I've seen work now for two, two and a half years. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, and it's awful to be homeless. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I, I would rather be naive and helpful than I would um, somebody who turns their back on their fellow human being. Yet. There is one woman in particular. We call her Gladbag, me and Fez. We first saw her the first day we got to Manhattan in the snow. She is wearing nothing but a trash bag and asking for help. We were freaked out. Yeah, no shoes, just shivering, shaking. Uh, you know, we were freaked out. We give her money. We couldn't believe it. Here it is, two and a half out, uh, years later. She still does the same act in the same neighborhood. And in two and a half years, she couldn't get clothes. Come on. Yeah. That's an act. She's still shoeless and in a plastic lawn bag. It's a great act. It got us the first time. Yeah. It's a great act, but it is an act. And you don't want to feel like you're being played. Hey, D, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Ron. Hi, Fez. Hi, D. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I'm a good person, and I feel bad if I think that uh, someone is really, you know, desolate. And this woman comes up to me one time in a shopping mall, and she's blind. She has a cane. She's seemingly blind. She comes up to me. She runs into me with the cane. She says, oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. And she hands me this piece of paper, and it says, hello, I'm blind. I would appreciate a couple dollars to see me through, you know, another day. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I, I gave her $2. The next day, I see the same woman. She bumps into me again. You know, oh, yeah. in a in a crowded in a crowded mall with a million <laughs> people everywhere. She buzzes to me, so I'm just like, "Hi, you got me yesterday." She's like, "Oh, oh, you know, I really did appreciate that." So I was like, "Ah, here." And you know what? I see her every single day. And she bumps into people same yeah. way. She's moving in with you. <laughs> she knows me. She wants to move in with me. I don't know. All right, that's on the uh, instant feedback. For two years, a guy sees a pregnant homeless woman. Still six months pregnant for two ah, years. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, D. You're welcome. Now, with that one, just down the street here sometimes, you'll see this more uh, quite a few times, actually. There is a really young girl who is blind. I mean, you can tell by her eyes. And someone in her family or whoever is supposed to be dealing with her is sitting her out on the corner with a can. Huh. She doesn't look physically able to have gotten there herself. Uh, Sean. Sean, you're on Rana Fez. Hey, Sean. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, there used to be a guy in a village a couple years ago that had a little sign that says, I will eat anything for a dollar. And the local kids would give him pennies to swallow, cigarettes. He used to eat the tops off of styrofoam cups. Was, he does that in front of uh, Fez. He's going to be eating some chowder for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Sean. <laughs> All right, so I that's an act. Take it back. It is an act. I don't know if he spit it back up or not, but it was, yeah. it, it's a scam. Yeah, but it at least works, and it's up front, and I'll do something back. And he's getting money and something to eat. Well, I, I definitely, I, now, so, you know, I understand that some of these subway musicians and uh, make big money. You know, some of them are great musicians down there. The I subway. like the mariachi band that, uh, that'll jump on the subway car. Right. I mean, uh, you know, guys playing at different places, they're not exactly homeless is what they do for a living. And, again, I feel like it adds to the city. I think... You know, when you see an artist of any kind, it makes the city a better place to live. I'm more likely to give to the performer that's actually on your car than just standing uh, onto one side in the station. If they're actually on the car with me and they're playing, they'll get something. You know what I'm a sucker for, though? Anyone playing a violin in the subway station. Because it sounds really good, and it seems like, well, maybe they go to Juilliard. There you go. <laughs> it seems like there's some sort of grace. And yet a horrible place, a subway station. Yes. There's some sort of grace down below in the tunnels. There's but, human dignity. But you give more money to people uh, who jump on your subway car and start playing the Congo drums. Yeah, if they're in the car, they're definitely getting something. But I'm not going to go seek out the violin player who's just set up in the subway station. You won't, I, See, I'll go after the violin guy in the subway station. If I'm passing him, I like it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I won't go search him out. And then also the other day I saw a woman playing in this event and had a little kid next to him. Will you ever give money to this uh, guy when you're in the subway? Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to interrupt you. Ugh. 
I am a veteran. I am collecting money. I wish I wasn't homeless like yourself. They all have the same cadence. No, that guy gets nothing from me. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to bother you. I am currently working two shifts <laughs> on a talk radio station. Someday you may find yourself working for WNEW. Someday you may find yourself asked to work middays and nights. If you can find it in your heart to reach inside and give me 30 or $60, I'll ask God to be with you. I also, I don't want to knock anyone down. I don't want to steal anyone's purse. <laughs> That's when everyone starts holding their purses and packages closer. <clears throat> I don't know. They're, they're, those guys in the subway are exactly like the uh, the pilots, that they have the same exact cadence no matter where you go. No matter what airplane you're on. And black or white. And they and they won't do it on the street, but in the subway. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to bother you. As you know, we're in a recession. <laughs> the other day, I saw the person on the subway train that uh, you you told me about this, where they actually bring the food on with them. Yeah. I, that was the first time I had seen it. it. was just this past weekend. Did you give them a dollar? No. Why what? not? They already had the groceries. No, but they're feeding homeless people. I, I don't buy it. The charities aren't, the legitimate charities aren't going to be on the subway cars. If they get on that, that's where they're feeding people. I forget what they're called. I wish I knew. But they have food if you are hungry or homeless. And then they'll also, if anyone here would like right. to, and then they give you a piece of paper with their number on it, they don't actually have a, like a card. Oh, okay. They they're, don't, they're not actually taking money? Yeah, they do. Oh. But I'm saying what they also do is say they'll come and take your uh, clothes. Oh, right, yeah. They'll show up where you live yeah. because that's what you want, and they'll pick up anything you have to donate. All right, here's what I'm asking with those people. They come on, they have juice and a sandwich because no one should ever go hungry. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm not homeless, but I'm a little hungry. I wouldn't mind an egg salad and a, and a grapefruit juice. Would that be wrong? Probably. <laughs> because my thing is if I just see another person eating, I'm hungry. They remind me of the blood bank. They have, like, juice and cookies for you. Hey, Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hello, Mike. What's up, guys? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Uh, there was a guy that used to play in the subways who was a brilliant musician, brilliant, but yeah. obviously off his rocker, totally nothing. And he told me, he said, one day, I used to stop and listen to him and give him money. He said, I'm going to be on Johnny Carson. I said, yeah, yeah, oh, God, that's great. Sure enough, I'm watching him the next week. They flew him out to L.A. He was on Johnny Carson, but Johnny Carson could obviously tell he was nuts. So he hooked him up with Lincoln Center. The guy was Juilliard trained. But just couldn't hold it together. Three weeks later, he was in the subway again. So, it was, it got, but New York can get to you that way, I guess. Let me ask, is, is it unprecedented that you guys are working two shifts? I have never heard of it before. Never. So you may be in the subway soon yourself. You yeah. never know. I feel like some days I feel like I could end up being in the subway. We may get <laughs> driven quite mad. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my partner with me. He'll only eat one food at a time. He goes from potatoes to vegetables, to finally his entree. Find it in your heart to help him. Please give me the cookies and the juice afterwards. Give him a sandwich, then a cookie, and then something to drink. Please do not mix up the order. He will freak. Uh, John, John, you're on Ron Fez. How are you, buddy? John A. Hey, how you doing? 6632 here. All right, buddy. hoo -ha! Uh, why don't you do an experiment? Send, like, Black Girl into a subway and send, uh, Billy Staples and see who collects more and you donate the money to charity. But do a little, uh, test to see how it works, how much they collect in an hour. If anyone gives Billy a dime, he can keep it. Yeah, he's the charity, believe <laughs> me. All right, let's bring Billy in here. Here's what, you know, Black Girl's in such a bad mood. Oh. But what about this? And, and John, I'm going to send you into our prize closet because you came up with an experiment and Billy never does any stunts anymore and he should. Here's the experiment, Fuzz, and see what you think about it. All right. Tonight we send him out. What if we do this tonight? We send him out during the Ron and Fuzz 7-Eleven show. Have him panhandle on the street. The final, uh, the next night we send him out. 
Have him sick, sing air sick songs. Oh, okay. So the first night, he's basically just being the homeless beggar. Yeah. Where there's, you know, he's not performing. He's not a street performer. The problem with this is how, what is he going to say? He's starving? <laughs> Billy, this is good. Come on in. You're already dressed for it for some reason. Oh, that's what he wore to work today, Ronnie. All right, Billy, so do you understand how we're going to do this? Tonight, let's send him out for exactly two hours tonight. Okay. Panhandling money. We'll do it, you know, somewhere in the area here. The next night, you go out, sing your air sick songs, and see if people give you money. Now, panhandling, what do you think he can make in two hours, Fez? Billy Staples, just panhandling, just begging for money out there. In two hours, I'll say he can make $10. I was thinking more like $12. All right, now, singing air sick songs, what do you think he can make? Singing air sick songs? Five. I don't. I don't think he'll make five. I, I think, think it'll be at four and some change. Two hours of air sick song. He's actually gonna owe money. Where people <laughs> will come up to him and take money from him for wasting time. Billy, what do you think you can get panhandling? Panhandling, uh, probably about twenty-five bucks. In two hours? Easily. And what do you think you can get singing those air sick songs? Uh, with my trained voice, probably about fifteen. You honestly think you'll get fifteen dollars for those songs? Oh, without a doubt. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm a trained performer. I can look pathetic. Now, for the experiment tonight, you know, you have to go out there and actually play the part. Of course. You can't be silly Billy because that's going to actually yeah. count as performing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you here, you know, uh, please give to the homeless pizza fund. No, not at all. I'll go, I'll say, uh, I need train fare to get home or I'll go by the subway. I'm stuck. Can you help me out? I'm in really big trouble. Oh yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll definitely play the role. Yeah, you got to be serious. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. You can't try to joke people, you know, for cash. Oh no, Not no, that no. That would work, but no, then I'd clean up. But uh, no, wish. this year I'll definitely be the. You'd pathetic. have to clean up to look homeless. I think I look pretty snazzy today. Well, I'm glad that even you agree that you'd be better off begging than doing air sick. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not a singer. That's the only problem. Or I'm... a writer, or a musician. Nothing. <laughs> And yet you have air sick. Stunt man. So, no, I'll definitely, I'll probably clean up both nights, actually. I could use the extra cash. All right, uh, Errol, Errol, you're on uh, Run of Fez. Hey, Errol. How you doing? Hon? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to, Staples. Yeah. If you think about it, there's 60 minutes in an hour. Let's say, I think you can get a dollar a minute, at least. A one minute, just like a dollar a minute. That's $60 an hour, $120 in two hours. That sounds right, right? You so, know, you I would think, think Errol, you would think that with the average person, but here, Billy is scary looking, his head is shaved, he looks unapproachable, and like Ronnie said, he doesn't look hungry. I don't think anybody's making $60 an hour. Good point, good point. I, I think they're making, you know, Billy's idea of 25 I think is a little high, I think $15 an hour, uh, which is tax-free, would be about right. Yeah, I think I can definitely... Uh... Pulling the money. I mean, I'll just sit there, look nice and pathetic, and beg, and, you know, be down on my luck. Oh. So it'll be an average night at work for you. Good. Why don't you just wear some raggedy clothes? Those are perfect that you have on right now. Yeah. What'd you do? Already go to wardrobe? I came prepared. All right. Yeah. No, I'll definitely... Uh... And you're up for doing this? Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Without a doubt. I this is take... gonna be... I'll do good. Bill, you have something to say before I go to break, or you just want to start babbling? Did you, did you feel like there was a second of dead air that you had to fill with, I'll, I'll, I'll do good? I think he's done. Is there anything else you want to say, butt balls? Is there a sweaty noodles update? <laughs> Nothing. 877-692-1027. Butt balls. It's a run of fest show. He's our double-barrel buckshot. It's uh, Billy Staples. <laughs> We're going to see if he can make more money panhandling or if he could performing <coughs> Zare six songs. But uh, some people are also sending some good stuff on the instant feedback. I bet Billy would make lots of money if he does some break dancing. says one. Wow. Those groups are great. I will give to the break dancing kids. And here's another one. I think Billy can make good money with a sock puppet 
that he interviews on the street. So now you're a street performer. Socko. That's fun. I was one of the sock puppets. You think you can do these things? I know I can do these. I think you can earn money doing these things. Sure. All right, show me how you would panhandle as if I'm just walking by you, sure. okay? All right, I'm walking down Broadway. Excuse me, can you help me out, please? I'm, I'm no. Real... No. Well, thank you no. very much. That'll thank be you. it? Yeah, I'm really down on my luck. I need train. I need to get home. I need trains. <laughs> I need train fare, you know. <laughs> the man just asked for a train. No one is going to hand you a railroad line. Luckily, I work for Lionel, so perhaps I can help you. <laughs> hey, it's uh, Craig. Yeah, am Tramp. <laughs> it's Craig the Cop. How you doing, Craig? How you doing, Ron? How you good, doing, Fed? Good to talk to you again, buddy. You were in the night we did the, um, what game show was that, Fez? Uh, I guess it was X-Files? Uh, I think oh, you might be mixing me up. Oh, with it, uh, maybe that was Chris the Cop. That was Chris. Yeah, that was Chris okay. the Cop. Okay. All right, <laughs> I'm Craig. I'm blowing the lid off the glad bag lady story for you. Oh, yeah. Do you know who we're talking about? Uh, well, I just want to make sure. You were talking about the little black woman who wears the glad bag as a, she wears the garbage bag like a poncho, right? Yes, yes. she does. Okay, here you go. We were working in Midtown along Fifth Avenue, and we saw this woman constantly. Yeah, that's where so, she normally is, Midtown. Right. So late one night, um, she got up, and she's shuffling wherever she's going, so we decided to follow her. We followed her down to the subway. She paid her fare. Uh, she went to the end of the tunnel, and she walked into the tunnel. We figured we got her for entering an off area. She's back there changing, and she has this huge pouch that she ties around her waist underneath the garbage bag. Guys, we locked her up, and when we were uh, vouchering her stuff, she had over two thousand dollars on her. Unbelievable! I'm, wow! I'm telling, I'm telling you guys, she's a total scam. She's a crack addict. She lives uptown. Every morning, she comes downtown. She puts her stuff back at the end of the tunnel. She puts on her glad bag, and she goes out. She goes to work. Like a super villain changing into her costume. <laughs> there you go. Now we saw her actually on a night off, where she. Uh, was all dressed up fairly nice, not, you know, incredible, but she had some nice sneakers on, some new kicks. She had a beautiful I, Tommy I, Hilfiger jacket and uh, listened to a nice discman. I've seen people walk out of Saks Fifth Avenue and give her beautiful <laughs> coats, shirts, clothes, you know, and she, she puts them aside and she puts her bag on. Do you honestly think she's making $2,000 a night? She's making a lot of money. I mean, she disappeared for a while. I haven't seen her, but who knows, man? <laughs> She That's, could be dead from all her crack. It is, uh, yeah, and you know what? It, matter of fact, we did see her with the other crackhead people. Yeah. I didn't see her smoking crack uh, myself, but I do know that the, uh, the that she's hanging out with a, what I call the crack gang. Yeah. Who I've seen smoking crack down there before. Yeah, well, you know, I just hope your listeners beware on who they're giving their money to because she's making more money than most of us. The how glad bag lady man, had a two grand on her when busted. Man, and how long did you lock her up, Craig? Uh, well, she she was in the system probably out in two days. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Put Billy in a garbage bag. I'm sure he'll do well. Billy, you want to do the garbage bag? To make two grand, I'll wear her garbage bag without a doubt. <laughs> All right. Yes, because you're right, an emaciated little black woman, aren't All you? All right, see you later. All right, see ya. Now, I guess, Billy, you could get busted for this, so this has to be your choice. All right, here's what we'll do tonight. We'll have you do one. <laughs> he just looked at his shoes like you actually made the arrest. Like you actually just put the cuffs on him. Billy? Supposed to have it. Billy, Fez and I are tired. We are working two shifts a day. I can't have you be an idiot and think that we're arresting you. <laughs> or asking people for trains. All right, so tonight... I want you to get a glad bag, and one, we'll have do one hour, just straight panhandling, and then later in the show, we'll do another hour where you're wearing just nothing but a glad bag. All right. And see if that does better for you. Okay. You're not going to run into the same problems, because you can change up here. You don't have to duck into a tunnel. Right. <laughs> All right. Or a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you won't see. She got picked up because she illegally went down a subway tunnel. I just hope that you run into her. And you two fall in love. <laughs> she screams, my act. You're doing my act. I hope she sues you. Right. For copyright infringement. Like when Farley. You can't get sued for uh, for ideas, so I'm covered on that one. This is going to be great. I can act. Oh, $2,000? You, I, I you are what, not making 2000 <laughs> If this fat F gets over his glad bag, man, we'll never see him again. I have a new 
business opportunity I'm going to explore. My agent feels this will be better for me. Got some kind of a, like, uh, His agent's wearing training. a glad bag. <laughs> his agent, I'm not kidding you, Billy's agent had newspapers stuck in his shoes. Glad bag Danny Rose, they call him. All right, so this will be tonight. We're just doing you panhandling. One hour, normal panhandling. The next wearing a nice, comfortable, extra large glad bag. That'll be me. I'll, and I'll be the one out there with the two grand in my pocket. Yeah. Why is he talking like I'm that? I'm excited, Ronnie. Why. What happens with you being a normal person? You don't talk like this in the office. Ronnie. You would never say, I'll be the one with the two grand in my pocket. Yeah. I'm excited. Why did you start singing scat all of a sudden, <laughs> Ella? No, nah, I didn't mean it's just the idea of uh, this kind of money is rather exciting. Yeah, it's just it's cool. All right, do you think you're going to get more just the regular panhandling or as the really pathetic homeless glad bagger? Oh, the glad bag without a doubt. A little a uh, little something to add to it, a little I outfit. I hope this woman sees you and jumps on your head and kills you. I right, know you know we're not making you do this in case you get busted, right? No, I'm doing it of my own free will. All right. Rory, does he have to sign something? Have Wonder Boy type up another contract. Okay. <laughs> I got news for you. You come walking up here with two grand, I'll shoot you in the forehead and take it. <laughs> Sushi's on me. Nice. All right. All right, there we have it tonight. The night show begins in uh, five short hours. Until then, enjoy uh, Opie and Anthony, who are going to do a lovely show for you today. That's right. First an hour of the best of, and then Opie and Anthony. And then we'll be back at 7 with Billy in a glad bag. Some of your midday callers are improving. You may one day make it tonight. One day. Not promising anything. Hey, uh, Chet, Chet, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, cardholder 172. All right. Hoo -ah. Hey, Chet. Yeah, I wanted to know if you guys were pissed off that those two guys during the midday are copying your show. Who, wrong and Hez? Yeah. They're a couple of pussies. See, that's a nighttime kind of call just now. That is. Daytime. Yeah, that's nighttime call. Their callers blow where the nighttime callers rock. No quick wit during the day. No. Gotta get some caffeine in them. That's true. All right, thank you, my friend. Ow. Out. I've That's never thing. Out. <laughs> I've never thought anything that wrong and Hez do is funny. <laughs> we may just play theme songs tonight. Just go over everybody's theme song. Caller and staff member theme songs. <laughs> Rooster on line nine. <laughs> Alright, I'm yes. getting a lot of Here's uh, Troy Troy on Ron and Fez. Hey Troy. Troy. Troy, you're there, buddy. Go ahead, Troy. Hey, what's up, guys? Big ass card hold 4540. All right, buddy. All right, fellas, I think you should make nature see like the permanent whatever. Steal away from Rossi, do whatever you got to do. All right. Hello? I would. I would actually do that. Now the caller's no Rossi. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Jeez. That's because the uh, nighttime <laughs> callers are so much hipper. Are they calling from inside the building? That's Rossi calling <laughs> from his little cubicle. Star. Hey, is everything okay uh, down there? I know your uh, little uh, office is near Earl's. The salad shooter. Yeah. <laughs> I did almost get hit by a water bottle, but other than that, I'm okay. Were you did here you really? last Friday for yeah, the when tantrum? He <laughs> definitely. It was, uh, very if he would have hit you with a water bottle, I would have killed him. <laughs> what gets into him? <laughs> like he's going crazy. Just nuts about stuff. <laughs> Alan, Alan, you're on run of Fez. Hey, boys, how you doing? Hey, uh, buddy. Good, Alan. Uh, uh, can we have a moan off between Sweet Melissa and Tenacious C? God, I would love that. Sounds nice, huh? You know, I know a couple of the girls have been after Tenacious C to bring her to the dark side. <laughs> I know Frenchie wanted her. Who else? I, I'm sure Melissa. Somebody else uh, brought up your name, too. <laughs> that they literally act like they're going to rape. <laughs> right. Oh, I maybe mean, it was Nurse Myra? Oh, yeah. Oh, and F me boobs, too. <laughs> See, because everyone has a crush on Tenacious C. Yeah, we all have crushes here. It doesn't matter what gender. You span all the genders. But you have uh, a long-time boyfriend? First-time yeah. caller? Yeah. 
Yes, seven years. Seven, seven years? years. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Can you know, I we... ask how old you are? <laughs> She's 15. <laughs> so he's been your boyfriend since 16. Who is it, Kevin Arnold? On and off. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was always. Thank you, Hawk. We ought to. That's good, Hawk. That's no. Enjoy. You finally laughed once. Here's uh, Rob. Rob, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hey, Rob. Wrong and Fez. I almost said that. I'm so mad at those guys. I hate them. Hey, Rob. Jerks. Good afternoon, boys. How are yeah. you? Good, good evening, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, I want to comment. These two guys in the middays, man, they've just been talking bad about you for two days now, the saying they're going to take over at night. Yeah, well, that'll never happen. Hey, are we ever going to get this picture of uh, the Tenacious C or any of the babies online there? There's, uh, go to ronfez.net. There's pictures of everybody there, okay? Yeah, but she's not on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah she is. I'm um, going now. Here. All right, go there now. All right. All right. All right. Good luck. Enjoy that. I know one thing. No matter what Tenacious C wears, the belly button is out. Do you ever notice that, Fez? Yes. Not on purpose. Yes, it is. <laughs> she's just wearing the same clothes that she owned when she met her boyfriend. <laughs> and she's gotten taller in seven years. Sixteen you were, huh? I guess, yeah. We ought to have a wedding on the on the show. Yeah. We, I love that. <laughs> After just... seven years, this has to be the one, huh? I... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know it is. Hey, let's bring uh, Billy Skakels in to uh, say goodbye to because he's going out to do a little stunt tonight. And I said stunt, say, I'm not stealing your catchphrase. <laughs> she has a catchphrase. You can't even get on the air. <laughs> Great. Uh, Work on that. Billy, what exactly are you doing tonight? Ronnie, can I say something? Yeah, please do. I've noticed this. Billy Staples, no matter what he wears, the belly <laughs> button is always showing. Sure. I thought that was a kiddie pool. <laughs> All right, Billy, what are you up to tonight? I'm going out on the street begging for money. I'm going to be a panhandler. Oh, as opposed to doing it in the hallways here at the office. This will be a little different. This will be an act. We got... where, where are you going to go out panhandling? I'm going to go right downstairs uh, by 57th and 7th, uh, right by the NNR subway down there. where We'll catch people coming up and going out. And I'm going to just, first, first down, I'm just going to beg normally for uh, change and get pathetic looking and feeling and stuff, so. So you're just going to do straight panhandling first for an hour? Correct, for an hour. And I, see how much money you can collect. I'd say you can collect $12. Or did I say a little higher? I said 15 you said 12 uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I thought mistake. I said 10 and you said 12 All right, let's go with that. <laughs> and then later you'll try it in a glad bag. Right, I, then I'll call. Uh, you'll be totally nude except for wearing a glad bag. Yeah, I'm going to have uh, just a glad bag. I put a hole in the head and the arms, and that's all I'm wearing. All right. Make sure your put piece is in the head. Out. All right. Run down there and then call us right away okay. so we can start your hour, okay? You got it. All right. And let us know when you're down there and you start. Oh, and isn't there, didn't we get word there's a movie shoot going on? Yeah, it's 61st Street. And Broadway. 61st and Broadway. Supposedly they got water, uh, like some kind of rain scene going on. Cool. Mm -hmm. So head down there and see what it is. Can't we get one of those in here? Maybe it's a big star, and they'll, they'll get you in a movie. <laughs> As the homeless fat bald man, which he's played now eight <laughs> times. <laughs> You're gonna get stereotyped, <laughs> stapled as a loser. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ron and his room, man. You guys suck. Go back to I, Tampa. You know what? Shut up, man. Why call us if you don't like our show? Go yes. listen to the midday fags. You guys stink, man. Well, I notice you're listening right now. Right, you're listening right now. Uh, you uh, must uh, enjoy it. I don't it. know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> See? We got him, Fuzzy. There you go. We got him. If you hate the show so much or you're such big fans of Wrong and Hez, why are you holding on our phones? <laughs> Pathetic. Pathetic losers. I hate that midday show. I got no problem saying it. They are the worst. They're the worst. There's nothing they do is funny. Where we, Fezzy, on the other hand, are the best. We're running Fez. Hey, uh, Mike, are we? Or the other ones? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a spy report on that, that afternoon show. All right, let me hear it. Spy I report. don't even want to talk about the midday show. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that the, uh, the guy has on that show, he's a little bit uh, light in the loafers. Yeah, I heard the same thing. I wouldn't doubt it. I think I know it's for a fact. Really? Yeah. What do you hear these things? Really? Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I know. Weird. I know. Is it wrong or has? Uh, <laughs> wrong. 
877-692-1027. Hey, uh, Mark, Mark, you're on uh, the Ron Fez show. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, Ron and Fez. Yeah, but I... I heard you guys, uh, you're ripping off the midday show there. Oh, we're not ripping off mm-hmm. anybody. We've been doing this show uh, at a different slot for the last two and a half years. Exactly. And you know, we invented off the it. the midday show. No, we're not ripping off anybody. If anything, they're ripping off us. You know, those two, <laughs> those two pusses in the midday, wrong and has, they can do their comedy trapezoid all they want. <laughs> we know who's been doing the comedy pyramid. We started the comedy pyramid, and it's documented, and I can prove it. Hawk, who started the comedy pyramid? Who Tell was it, Hawk? Ron and Fez. Thank you very much. Did he say wrong and Fez? He doesn't know. <laughs> Just let Hawk go. He's from Queens and he's doing two shifts a day. You don't know how stupid you get. Hey, uh, Carter. Carter, you're on the air. How you doing, buddy? Oh, hey, what's up, Ron and Fez? Uh, uh, I just want to let you know that I totally jump ship and uh, you guys suck now. I started wronghez.net. Don't start wrong. He- <laughs> you oh, know- hell yeah. They're a, they're a flash in the pan. Trust no, me, my I friend. See, I see so much potential you don't even know. <sighs> we'll see who sticks around. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see who's got legs. Comedy <laughs> legs. It's not those midday a-holes. Wrong and has. Oh, man, those guys, that message board is going to rock. You don't it even know. It sucks. It sucks. They're the worst show I've ever heard. That midday show right now is the worst show I've ever heard. And neither one of them has a radio voice, which I think is everything that's important. And when Billy Staples gets back from panhandling, I want him to go on that wronghez.net and start flaming people on right. the message board. <laughs> Flame them. Flame <laughs> them now. You know what else I like to say to all the cool nighttime callers? Call that midday show and just tie up their lines and ruin them. Right. Put them out of business. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey Dave, you're on the air. Dave, it's Ron Fest show. Hey, Hi know, Dave. Hey, uh, you know you guys answer just like the midday guys. What are you talking about? You answer three times. You know, uh, Ron, you're, you're trying to be like uh, wrong over there. No, saying it two times. That's wrong. What do you mean? They We've been first. doing this for years. And as a matter of fact, I remember. And somewhere I have tape of those guys going, I love the way you guys answer phones. Right. Because you get the caller's name out there three times rather than something stupid like the call letters. What I hate is with Rong and Hez, they're so nice to us like in the hallways or at the Christmas party. You know, then they start this bull crap on the air. Good. It's on. You want a war, you got it. And look, just bring it. Bring it, don't sing it. That's what wrong. I'm Fez. What a crap show. George, George, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, George. Fuck me. Hey, buddy. Hey, I'm heard that wrong and heads are gonna holler out Dukes back just to fight you guys. I wish they would. They deserve. I wish they would. Uh, his new name is Dumpy. Dumpy Dukes. <laughs> Dumpy Dukes? <laughs> so stupid. All right, where the hell's Billy? Is he there yet? Is he starting his little gimmick? I know. The uh, trip was to downstairs. Yeah. You know who I hate now is Carter. I'll destroy that website. That wronghez.net. That's not even their real name. Should we just call them that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're making it up. Our thing is we like to take someone's name and just make fun of it. Kind of twist it. It's what we like to call wordplay, and we're the best at it. That's right. Wrong and has. You're going to learn. We're the absolute best at it. All right. We're waiting uh, for Billy Staples. He's going to spend an hour trying to um, panhandle, see how much money he can get. If he gets anything more than, like, let's say 20 bucks, I'll be furious. I don't think he's going to get it. He, He's too big. Yeah. He's, uh, he's scary looking. He's bald right now. That is true. He's got bags under his eyes that look like they're from Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And I just don't think he's approachable. And, of course, he doesn't look hungry. Let's work in that factor. That fat look, factor. He does look whacked. Like, maybe you give him a dollar just to get out of the way. Because if you didn't know him, you might think he's a badass. Now, there's the guy that's like at 57th and 6th over by the McDonald's, the newsstand there. Mm-hmm. He's a big fat guy. And what his angle is, when he begs... He just sits there on the ground next to the newsstand. He's got a dog with him, I think, 
and a big sign asking for a cheeseburger. Well, what they do uh, a lot of times is they'll even say, help me feed my dog. Right. Because there's so many dog lovers out there who are like homeless people. And then they'll go, oh, no, a puppy hasn't eaten. I'll give it money. Yeah, across the street from him on 57th is the guy with the two cats. Really? Yeah. Now, <laughs> I would you would think these two homeless sets of pets would get into it in the middle of 57th Street. I'm always wondering, some of these people, since they stay in the same neighborhood, is that because you don't go into somebody else's panhandling area? Could Billy get swarmed on by some homeless people who, oh, that's a good you question. know, have staked out that area? Or is it a case of they've always done well in that corner and they're just not going to shake it up? Shake it up. Shake it up. Tony, Tony, you're on Ron and Fuss. Tony. Hey. You're on, the, you're on the originals, Ron and Fuss. Yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know you need to get rid of Billy Stables. I heard him moonlighting up on that uh, wrong and head thing. He was talking about doing the same deal that he's doing. Tonight. You know, any of the callers that I even find out are on that show. They're done here. Roy, yeah. write their names down. We'll make a list. And you know what? They can stay with wrong and heads if that's who they want to call. I wish we would have spent more time. We could have come up with a better thing than Hez. <laughs> the wrong thing, Fitz. Pez? Wrong and Pez. <laughs> Pez dispenser. <laughs> what is your head come up and little Pez candy come out? That must be great for his partner, Wrong, who's just always wrong about stuff and things. He's never been right. He's always wrong. Wrong and Hez. Pez. Are we going to go with Pez instead of Hez? I don't know. Yeah. We keep this up. We're going to get yanked from these double shifts. <laughs> yeah, I know. Man, we're just whacking this early into it. They're going to This score... early into it, we're a couple of deeks. <laughs> we're going to get escorted from the studio. All right, and another Much thing. Much like a morning guy, I know. I just thought someone was behind me, and I turned around, and it was nothing but light. No. Just some reflections, that's all. Here's uh, Rich. Rich, you're on Runifest. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rich. Hey, buddy. Yeah. What can we do for you? 9,800 here. Listen, I want to offer my services. I think you ought to mediate with these guys, and I'll get the four of you in the room together. And no, uh, It's not going to happen. I it won't sit never, down with them. It'll never happen. I know Ron tried to meet with Ron, but no, it's not going to happen. Hey, uh, Dan. Dan, you're on Runifest. Hey, I got an idea. If you really want to piss off Hez, find out his real name and just keep calling him the whole day long. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because no one's actually even named that. I thought Hez was his real name. No. I'm not even sure it's his real voice. I don't think anything's real about that show. <laughs> Bunch of fakes. Pusses. Nice. No problem. I like I like it when you walk like this. Oh yeah. Sometimes we just have to go to the mattresses. We clear the air. Shannon. Hey Shannon. Hey buddies. Hey buddy. Ron, listen, I got a good idea. Yeah. You know how you have your buddy list. You need to come up with an anti-buddy list for anybody associated with those two losers. You know what I uh, understand? S Man is on there constantly. Really? Yeah. As what? Oh, uh, they call him Genie Bob. Really? Genie Bob. <laughs> So he's supposed to be some genie named Bob. What? Which I don't even get. What wish is he going to make come true? I wish he'd stay on the midday show with Wrong and Hez. I give him two weeks. That is it. Two weeks. I'll tell you what. By 4th of July. Yeah. By 4th of July, we'll see if they're still here. <laughs> by 4th of July. That quickly. That's, that's your prediction? Yes. Write it down, Rory. Write down their names. Strike a line through it. Hear that? They're going in the book. 877-692-1027. Where's Billy? He's supposed to be setting up this bit. Where is the world's worst panhandler? I just talked to him. He's uh, getting himself set up. He said he needs the best location. So he said he was on a 57th and 7th, two seconds from here. Yeah, he's... It's downstairs. I had to yell at him to say hurry up, so... Is he trying to get in character? Yeah, good. <laughs> Tom, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah. Good. Good, good. I, I was just thinking, you guys should uh, get your cop buddies to get out there and try and find Billy and arrest him for panhandling. I hope he does. I hope they <laughs> shoot him. If anything, I hope they shoot him. All right, I'm thanks, sh Tom. All right, see you. Yeah, if any cops run into uh, Billy Staples panhandling, he's sure to resist. Okay. Use extreme prejudice. We do. All right, here's Billy. 
He's already got his meat fist out there. Hey, Billy. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. Hi, hey, Billy. Hey, I like to see, I like that look that Jeremy shot you when you opened up your cake hole during a meeting today. <laughs> what do you mean? I was, I was actually talking to Fez. Yeah, but did you see the way he looked at you? No. You didn't catch that? No, I missed it. Maybe it's just as well what I did. All right, Billy, you ready to start your gimmick? Yeah, I'm all set here, Ron. Where are you exactly? Right at the corner of 57th and 7th by the uh, subway, the end of the subway right. station. And you're doing this little stunt by your own accord? It has nothing to do with Ron and Fez? That is correct. I'm doing this at my own free will and do not hold Ron and Fez accountable whatsoever. Thank you very much. You're Move welcome. in. Move in. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need, Billy. All right, how are you going to do this? What are you wearing? What are you doing? Well, I just got my shorts and my dirty T-shirt on with wow. my stain on the front. And uh, I'm just going to hold the phone by my side and just start asking, you know, pathetically and begging for money. You right. know, don't act like you made a costume change. That was what you wore to work today. Oh, All, right. All right. Are you ready, Billy? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's stay here. All right. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Your hour's now starting. Can you spare some change? Can you, anybody got a spare some change, please? Can you spare some change? Any change at all? Spare some change. I need to get home. Nothing. Nothing at all. Hi, can you help me out? Can you spare some change? Anybody? A nickel, a dime. I need to get home. I need to get home. Yes. Yeah. I found the cell phone. Do you want to buy it? Anybody spare some change? Anybody got any change they can spare? Anybody have any change you can spare, please? They already buy some on the I cell phone. Help, please. Okay, so far not so good. Why? Yeah. I don't understand. Uh, people are, I remember it's been a bad batch. I right, keep trying. Okay. Is anyone even paying you any attention? Are they looking at you? Yeah, just uh, the one black woman goes, if you need change, why do you have a cell phone? That's good. Okay, hold on. It's a great point. Anybody spare some change, please? I need to get home. Hello? Can you help me out? Can somebody spare some change? Anybody spare some change, please? Hello? Hi there. Can you spare some change? Please? He should act anybody? like he's talking to his Take relatives. Time, anything? Hi, can anybody spare some change? Hi, can you help me out with some spare change? And oh, we'll try to take some calls while Billy's going to help me out with some change. Hey, Sean, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, why is he saying he needs change to go home? He's supposed to be homeless. To home. Can anybody spare some change? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> hey, Billy. Billy, can you hear us? Yeah, go ahead. All right, one of the things people are saying you're doing wrong is, uh, you're supposed to be homeless, and yet you're asking for money to get home. Oh, okay, I got you. All right. Now you're on the uh, near the NR train on uh, on Seventh Avenue. Correct. Okay. Now right. are, are you're on the street. Right on the street. Right okay. by the entrance to the subway. Okay. I'm outside. Yeah, I'm on the street. All right. All right. Try it again. All right. Can you're gonna have to change. Loose change, please. I'm in a I'm in a jam. I'm in a jam. Those shorts are so tight. They're the jam. Do you have any chicken spare? Anybody got any chicken spare? Anybody? Can you help me out, please? Oh, he's really starting slow. Yeah. He's going to have to change his story. You can't just ask for change. Can you spare change on you? Hi, can you help? Anybody have any spare change, please? Yeah, he's kind of dull. Anybody have any spare change, please? All right, Anthony, Anthony, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, okay. Anthony. What's up, Ron? It says nighttime, 13503. All right. Ooh, uh, nighttime forever. That's right. Uh, I'm just calling, you know, I Billy's, trying to, change. Billy's trying to go for a pathetic act. She told me how many times he left rehab and just his life story. All right, that's People good. People pay him 20 bucks to shut him up. Right, not just, Later, you know, guys. change. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right, yeah. right, Billy. Anybody got any extra change they could spare? All right, Billy, come back to us. Billy. Help me out, anybody? Billy, 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 Billy. Anybody got any change? Hello, can you help me out, please? I'm in a jam. Hello, spare change, anybody? Hi, right, Billy. Uh, Rory, out, light the idiot signal and see anybody if he can spot out? that in the sky. All right, let us know when you get him again. <laughs> He's driving me nuts already. <laughs> He's not gonna get a dime. He makes Ronnie. me hate the homeless. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey Jim, you're on Run a Fez. Hey, Hi, Jim. Fred. How's it going? Billy Staple stars as the fat Fisher King. <laughs> Good night, guys. Fisher King size is what, what he is. The nighttime callers blow the midday callers away. 
Not even close. Oh, these night callers are good. Yeah, they're good. Here's uh, Will. Will, you're on run of fest. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Will. Fellas, I wish I could have called you earlier. You guys were way high on those uh, levels. I mean, yeah. 15, 12, 10. He's going to be lucky if he can get $2 because you got to think. These guys are going to be putting in a dime, a nickel, Here's a Here's the thing about Billy. Whatever he does, he loses us. Right. Everything he touched turns to mud. And the one thing you could say about Billy, he's the best dressed homeless guy out there. Well, I don't know about that. Later yeah, tonight, see him. Later tonight, we're sending him out nothing but a glad bag. And that should help out <laughs> yeah. a lot. Oh, that's an improvement, right? Right yeah, now, he's in a... his 86 Mets T-shirt. <laughs> the he glory bought... days. All right. Talk to <laughs> the later, glory well. day. Uh, let me go back to Meat Fest. Here he is. He's just listed as Meat Fest now on the Hello? screen. Hey, meat Fest. Any change make it spare. Hello? Meat. Meat. Me. Hey, guys. Billy. Yeah. Have you me. got even so much as a dime? No, just a lot of bad luck. All right, here's, yeah. what, here's what part of your problem is. You haven't explained why you're pathetic. Bring up the five rehabs, the two divorces. Bring up uh, the fact that you don't uh, have anything going for you. You're okay. unfunny. I, Mention air sick. I... <laughs> I dare you to say you're hungry. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try that approach. Maybe that'll work. Yeah. All right, just okay. get a little more Details. specific. Don't just ask for change. Right. Okay. All right. All right, let's hear this. This new approach now. Hi, can anybody spare some change for the five rehabs? I'm in a lot of trouble. What an idiot. For the five rehabs. You're not getting... Can anybody getting... spare any change to cut down a rehab? I'm getting a divorce too. I'm out of rehab. Can you spare some change, sir? You know, I always Anybody like the guys that say they're please? trying to pay for their bed that I night. Use some help. Anybody spare some change? My wife left me. I'm out of rehab. Can you spare some change? I have my business went under. <laughs> what jerk store? I sir, <laughs> Billy. Anybody spare some change, please. I'm just out of rehab. I can use some help. Please, anything you can spare. All right, Billy. Can anybody spare any change, please? All right, he's so bad at this. By the way, Caesar, if you write to me on the incident feedback and say that the NR line is on Lexington instead of 7th Avenue again. He's written it 90 times. <laughs> right. It is at 7th Avenue. Yes. It's at 7th and 57th. You're not from Manhattan. <laughs> Ghetto aristocrat at AOL.com. Do you realize? You're wrong. Do you realize the NR train hits more than one stop? All right, here's... <laughs> Now, that the, it's not just Lexington. Here's the other thing. You know that I'm exhausted when an instant feedbacker is driving me nuts. <laughs> and I'm starting to point them out. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Billy. Meat fish. Meat fish, you're awful at this, okay? What have you gotten so far? You're six minutes into this. I'm off to a slow start. Yeah. You yeah, sure I'm are. A, yeah. I'm All right, gonna have... All right, Bi Billy, listen up. Uh, Fez listen. says, listen. Yeah. Well, don't yell yes instead of listening. That stops the listening point. <laughs> Look at the fuck over the sky. What the hell was Who that? Who yelled that at you, Billy? It was Opie. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Afro show. There's your Afro show. That's <laughs> your fat end home <laughs> All right, he's, that's not helping. No, Wait, and, he's no. Not his, and he's not going into his pockets either. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, Billy? That's not going to help. <laughs> yeah, that's like getting on the air either. All right, I want you to just now start to almost cry and let people know you got no place that you can stay tonight. Right. Okay. All right. I can't believe that counts as an Afro show now. Anybody help me out, please? Just out of rehab. I need some change. I got no place to stay tonight. I'm looking to get into a shelter. Anybody change, please? Anybody spare some change, please? I'm just out of rehab. I need to get into Billy, a shelter. Billy, Billy, you're crying while you're saying this. Please, God, help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me. You're an actor, Mr. Sopranos. Spare some change for a guy. Oh my God, it's the guy from The Sopranos. Which guy? The uh the the ball the balding uh, really nasty one the one that killed uh Tony's uh, new captain. I, I like Even <laughs> Guido the killer pimp wouldn't give you change. You. <laughs> Can you help me out, please? I need to, I need a place to stay for tonight. I'm just out of rehab. 
somebody help me out with some change, please? I need shelter tonight. You know, I can... I just get out of rehab. I got nowhere to go. I can understand oh, the homeless somebody, being passed by, but heckled. Nobody. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. All right, I'm on my way. I, how much you get? 76 cents. I right, keep following that guy. He's yeah. hot. Follow him. Take off down the street. Do you have anything more? Come on, I really need a place to stay, sir. I think that's about it, man. Come on. you got to have more. <laughs> Great. What's that? No, it's me. That's the only reason I got money. Oh, you're pathetic. <laughs> that doesn't count. You're yeah, back to zero. Pathetic. <laughs> Can somebody help? Anybody get any extra money, any change, please? I just had a rehab. God, he's awful at this. All right, we just hit the 10-minute mark. Billy is not town enough to be homeless. <laughs> he even sucks at being homeless. <laughs> hey, Leo, you're on run of Fez. Hey, hey, Leo. You said that uh, Xanar doesn't hit Lexington. It doesn't even uh, go on that side. That's 456. Apparently, I didn't you don't say know. It you does... need unique New York. I no. didn't say it doesn't hit Lexington. We're getting from this other guy. You that... said it has more than one station. That, I said it has... That implies that it has one station on Lexington. I said the NR line has more than one stop. Oh, never mind. <laughs> God. What an idiot. People are driving us nuts. We're four shows into this. Right, let me go back to Skakels. His name keeps changing on the screen. Maidfest. Yeah. I'm not doing good, guys. Hey, Billy? Yeah. This might be the end for you uh, on the show. You can't seem to pull anything off. Oh, wait till you see what I do here. What? I'm going to turn on the faucets. I'm going to do this big now. I'm turning this up a notch. Well, why did you do it to start that way? You've started this bit, and it's really bad. Uh, we've said we want you crying. Bring up Jesus. Tell people okay. to look into their heart. Look into okay. their heart. You saw the Cohen brothers. <laughs> All right, here we go. Please. Can anybody help me? Please, I got no place to stay tonight. Please, look into your hearts. Help me. Come on. Somebody. I just need some change. Did anybody have any change? I need a place to stay. Please, look into your hearts. Look to the baby Jesus. He'll help. Please. <laughs> please, can you folks help me, please? I just out of rehab. I need a place to stay tonight. Can you help me, please? Anybody's a spare change? Sir, please, a spare change? Can you spare any change, please? Just out of rehab. I need a place to stay tonight. I'm homeless. Hello? Can I, sir, can you spare some change? Sir, can you look into your heart spare some change, please? Anybody? Sir, can you spare any change, please? Awesome. I'm just out of rehab. I have no place to stay. Sir, could you spare any change? Can you spare change, please, for me? Please look into your heart. Help me out, fellow human being. Please help me out. I need some change. I just had a rehab. I got no place to stay. Can you help me, please, to spare change? Please. I'd be impressed, but we hear this speech every day in the office. <laughs> Billy. Yeah. All right, that was much better. That was good. Now you're acting. Okay. Like that. <laughs> no, yeah, that's okay. You stay with it. We'll come back to you, all right? Okay. All right? Oh, God, I can't stand Billy. I'm not going to lie to you. I can't stand him. <laughs> I want to out Duke that son of a bitch so quick. I want to send him to Duke land. Just sit next to Debbie Dukes. Hey, uh, Paul, Paul, you're on Run of Fest. Hey, Hello, Paul. Guys. Yeah. Uh, why don't you put Tenacious C out there? I bet you make a lot more money. I'd give Tenacious C 200 just to let me smell it. <laughs> Just to let me get close to it. Just to brush against it. 200. She's What's still the here. Deal? She's still in the studio. Oh. She's standing right there. Oh, Billy's just stinking out there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you'd think if anyone could pull off the homeless bit at the least. Right. Be Skakels. <laughs> who is basically homeless. I think he finally had to move out of that apartment of his this past weekend. Uh, let me go back to fat guy. Billy! What? That's a good line. Yeah. 
He's eating. <laughs> hey, you, Billy. You can't have crackers while you're trying to say you're homeless. <laughs> Sir, anybody? Can somebody help me out, please? I don't want to spend the night on the street. I just got out of rehab, man. Can you look in your heart and help, sir? Please, anything you got? Thank you. Oh, I heard a thank you. Billy. Yeah. How you doing? Not uh, still at 76 and holding. All right, that, you have zero. You got that from somebody who knows you. That's nothing. Well, at least I have noise in my cup. No, you have nothing. You're coming up on the 15-minute mark. Okay, I'm going to, I I feel uh, this is going to be my lucky streak here. What was that last thank you? Didn't you get something there? No, just a dirty look. <laughs> thank you. I let them know that someday they could end up like you. I don't want to spend the night on the street. All right, Ronnie. Can you help me out? Anything at all? Look me a heart. Any spare change you have? Yeah. What if he went with the mentally challenged angle? Can you help me out with the spare change? I just had a rehab. Please, I got a drinking problem. (laughs) Can you guys help me out? Sir, anything at all? I don't want to spend the night on the street. Please. You tell the Sir, people you, you want money out? from you have a drinking problem. Spend the night on the street. You're only going to buy drink with it. Person. Sir, can you help me out with any spare change at all? Please, sir. He basically said, could you buy me a drink? Can you help me? Can you help somebody out with some, with some change? Anybody? Some loose change, please. Please look into your heart. Help out a fellow human being. Please help me out with some change, please. Just out of rehab. I don't want to spend the night on the street. Can you help me out with the change? Just think, Billy. Anybody, sir, You're just saying the sir, same thing over and over. That's not change. working. All right. Go out there and tell him maybe he needs to change it up and either try to be physically or mentally handicapped. Mentally. All right? Tell right, him that. Billy. Hey, Billy. Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, we're going to go with a new angle here. Okay, what's the angle? You're going to be physically and mentally handicapped. I want you to, you know, do something weird with the legs yeah. and the arms. Kind of tuck an arm up. Yeah, tuck an arm up. Like and, a T-Rex arm. And talk like a retarded person and say, please, who would leave a retarded person to, because uh, you look like half a retard, uh, to sleep in the street. Please help you, okay? And explain that you have a learning disability. And explain that even Jesus loves the retarded kids. Okay. All right. All right, let me, uh... I think this is going to be it. This is what's going to bring in the big quarters and dimes. And make sure they don't see your cell phone, too, you idiot. Right. I'm, tr- I'm trying my best to keep it hidden. Hang on a second. You're keeping your talent hidden right now, my friend. <laughs> Tuck it under one of your homeless bitch teats. <laughs> if not, you're going to have to go back to that old standby and throw yourself down the subway stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Again? That trick never works. <laughs> All right, Billy, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to be retarded? Can you help me out? Can you help me out with the change? Hello? Can you help me out, please? Hello? Can you help me out, please? Hello, sir? Can you help me out with the change? Can you help me out with the is he Sir, just bad or is the city just cruel? Somebody help me. It's a hard town. I'm not kidding you. It's a oh. hard, hard town. <laughs> Man, can you help me out with a few change, please? Explain the learning disability and the retardation. How Jesus loves it. Sir, can you, anybody help me out with some change, please? Please don't let me spend the night on the street. Even Jesus loves me, God. <laughs> Even Jesus. Like, he did, like Jesus would be the last person that would love the retarded. He hates everyone. It would be like even Hitler loves the retarded. Change, please. I'm afraid to be on the street. Can somebody help me out? I like that. I'm afraid. Yeah. Change, please. The fear factor is good, Billy. Excuse me, sir. Can you have any change to help me? He says to change. Okay, change for me. You help out the table. If you change, you're all healthy. If you change, please, don't let the disabled be alone. Oh, God, what an idiot. And he's not getting a fat cent. Nothing. Not one penny from people. That 76 cents does not count. He is at zero. 
He is the worst at everything. I never would have guessed he'd have a problem being pathetic. I know. I know. <laughs> Out of everybody. He has the most practice. But you know, Fez is right. This city is hard. Don't walk past a retarded homeless person. And I don't care who you are. You could be Donald Trump and this city will kick your ass occasionally. They will, it will kick your ass. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, the five time rehab failure here. Beautiful. Oh. Oh. Hey, Billy. Excuse me. Can I, can I get some help? Please can you stay? I'm afraid to be on the street. Help me, please, little James. There you go. There you go. Put on the retardness. Please help me with little change for tonight, please. 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 Can you spare a little change, sir? Sir, please. Please. Help, help, help me out. I don't want to be on the streets alone. Can you spare some change, sir? Ma'am, anything? Uh, he's making nowhere with this, Fez. Right, and he's been out there 20 minutes now out of his panhandling hour. I'm going to make him stay out there all hour just because I can't stand him. And then well, later, I know you don't want to look at him again. Later, we're going to put him in nothing but a baggie like the baggie lady. Glad which, bag. From which we understand uh, that she, when she was arrested, she had a pouch with $2,000. Nice. See, so it's not impossible, Billy. Yeah. No one's saying you have to come in with two grand. And that's from apparently a crackhead. Right. And so a crackhead is better than you at something. <laughs> a crackhead can pull it together enough to get two grand. Billy, you should be able to come in with at least 20, 25 bucks. Here's, uh... Ronnie and I each bet just half of that. Here's, uh, Wayne. Wayne, you're running around a fence. Hey, Wayne. Hey, guy. Hey, buddy. Um, listen, I'm listening to this. I'm listening to Billy, you know, make a horrifying attempt at this. And the thing that's the most striking is that he sounds exactly the same as the retarded guy as he did before. I'm willing to that's say that he is half a retard. I'm willing to bet that. I'd love to get his mother on the stand and just I'd make her admit she dropped him. What stand? Hot dog? <laughs> on her own hot dog stand. And I confess that she dropped that fat baby down some stairs. We got to take a break. Oh, you're not going to miss this tonight with Billy. Billy is uh, literally going to end up wearing nothing but a glad bag. Yeah, we're going to put him in one of those big, hefty lawn bags. Like he's lost so much. Uh, he's fallen so far that for somehow he lost his clothes. <laughs> because we know this woman. Fez and I, like a couple of rubes, like a couple of idiots off the turnip truck when we got to New York, we saw her in the snow naked except for wearing the uh, glad bag and handed her money horrified going oh my god no i had never seen anything like it in my life and she had the whole stutter step you know where she was like almost so frozen right. she couldn't move then of course we saw her every night for the next two years including off nights because she takes the same subway as us where she'd be wearing her regular clothes mm -hmm. yeah you think in two years you'd be able to collect enough to uh buy a, at least some sort of blouse then we heard to from go a, with the glad bag skirt. What was the cop's name that busted her? Was it uh, Craig the cop? Craig the cop. Craig said when he busted her, she had a pouch underneath that glad bag with two thousand dollars in there. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try the same thing with Billy Staples. So far, the just the straight panhandling, no gimmick, yeah. is not working. Now under his glad bag, he will have a pouch that serves as his new stomach. <laughs> it has been stapled. Now, is there any way, instead of the glad bag, to just get him out there in a wooden barrel with suspenders on it? What we ought, what we ought to do is wait till he gets out there and have Wonder Boy run out and rip it off him, so he's bare ass running through the street. Light the bag on fire, melt it to his fat flesh. That's the company bag. Take it. We're running fuzz. Hey, uh, we got Weeble out on the street. Has been out for uh, what over half an hour. Right, trying to collect money. He said he was homeless. <laughs> I don't think anyone's uh, buying a guy that size being homeless. Hey, uh, Billy Staples. Billy, you're on the air. Can you spare a little change, please? I'm not, I'm not retarded. I'm homeless. Billy. Hello? Still doing the retarded best. That has it worked during the commercial break. Did you pick up any sort of cash? Yeah, I'm up to about 10 bucks. Oh, right, you're lying. <laughs> no, I'm not. How did you get 10 bucks while we were gone? You were pathetic while you were on the air. I had a flurry. A couple You're of cars pulled up. A couple of cars? Yeah. 
I even got a stuff squishy. He just saw a golden dollar in here. All right, now, do you, did they know that you're Billy? Um, I didn't ask because I was in character, but they just said, here you go, sir. Why would any cars ever pull up to a homeless guy? Because uh, I look like a retard with my little fake hand and stuff. So. Roy Hamptons, did he get checked for cash on him before he left, like he, I asked? Yes, and he didn't have any on him. All right, Billy, let's see you pull it off because we didn't hear you getting any money. Now you're saying you got 10 bucks. Yeah, now magically 10 bucks has appeared. I left all my money in my right hand drawer along with my AA. Billy, chip. let's just see you do it. Okay. Along with my chip. Excuse me. Can you help me out, please? Can somebody help me out with change? Hello, sir. Can you help me out with change, please? I can't spend the night on the street. Hello? Can you spend some change, please? Can you spend some change? Thank you. Thank you, pretty lady. Can you spend a little change, please? That wasn't bad. Got a quarter out of that one. You got a quarter from that lady? Yeah. I'm on a roll here. All right, Hold at on. 10 bucks a half hour, you're making more money than you're making here. Pretty close. <laughs> when you take out the taxes, I'm about even. I right, keep going, Billy. Okay. So obviously the mentally challenged oh, bit is working if this is on the level. Let me change so I can spare quarter, sir. Hello? Give me sir, can you spare any change for me, please? Please, not retarded. I'm just homeless. Please, Why would don't you leave me retarded? on the street. <laughs> sir, can you spare any change for me, please? Please. Give me that. Can you have any change for me, please? Can you spare any change, sir? What a sight this has to be. Yeah. This is awful. All right. Yes, please. Billy, come back can up in what, a half hour? Change? Half hour is he coming yeah, back? Yeah, just up? under a half hour. All right, let him know when his time is up and tell him to get back up here. All right. Uh, let me let me go back and check with uh, Staples. Please, English change, please. Oh, can God. you spare some change, please? Hello, can you spare any change, please? Billy. <laughs> what? Billy, what? Hello. Yes. What? Hey guys. Uh, how well have you done? I got another about another buck and change. All right. So for some reason during a commercial break where we don't hear from him we you get ten dollars the whole time we're listening to you you get a dollar twenty five yeah it's just a luck of the draw i guess yeah you got six minutes left in your hour really okay all right gotta turn it on oh, he's gotta turn it on Roy, he's this close you hear it you know i'm not just picking on him right no i know I hear. But he's going like, what? And, oh, really? Oh, uh -huh. God. He's got to interest people. Oh, yeah. You know, not even this week where we're doing the double shifts and everyone really needs to pick it up a notch. Desi, I know you haven't seen this yet. Billy Staples is ready to head out, and he is in his big-ass glad bag. All right, I got to see this. Will this be the defining factor in him going out to Panhandle when he's dressed like the glad bag woman? Nothing but a glad bag. Bring him in, Billy Staples. <laughs> oh, my God. Walk over there so Fez can get the full look. I want to see everything with yeah. the... Oh, with the bare feet. He looks like a Flintstone character, the way he has it cut. <laughs> he does. He does. It looks like he's wearing Fred Flintstone's suit. All you need is a necktie. Does anyone have a necktie? Uh... Now, you, you collected how much money in your one hour just normal panhandling? $10.65. All right, so actually, Fez was closest. You said, what, 10 Fez? I said $10. That's, uh, and you take out the 76 cents you got from somebody you know. Right. And Fez is almost right on the money. You're right there. Now, with this outfit. Actually, if you do that, Fez, you went over. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> this price is right. I'm out. <laughs> now, in this outfit. I'm trying to re-guesstimate how much money you're going to bring in. Yeah, it's got, I mean, it's just so pathetic. The problem is, even in a plastic bag, you look mid-size heavy. The the belly's sticking out pretty far. You want a better look, Fez, when I mean, come around again? Maybe you need one yeah. of those Christmas tree bags when you throw out your tree <laughs> at the end of what December. What kind of bag is that exactly? <laughs> yeah, what are, you, what are you, who are you wearing tonight, Billy? <laughs> who are you wearing? I'm wearing the latest from Pick a Bagel downstairs. Oh, you went and borrowed it off them, or you steal it? No, I asked them if they had an extra garbage bag. 
Like, such why bother you, to pick a bagel? Oh, you practically are home. I know no. you know them. The way you begged last night, you're begging one of the listeners to stay at their house. Tonight you're going shuffling through uh, day-old bagels to get a garbage bag. Now, Jeannie Bob is going to go out with him. Really? Yeah. I look forward to working with him. Jeannie Bob, the artist formerly known as Ass Man. This is stupid. The night caller, formerly known as Ass Man. The new midday Jeannie Bob. All right, exhaustion. All right, so why don't you guys head out? Grab Jeannie. Where's Jeannie at? He's right out. Jeannie! Right out. <laughs> like, All right, Jeannie that, Bob. It always works for Major Nelson. We need you to go out with the cell phone and stay about uh, about a foot away from Billy, but act like you're not looking at him. Act like you don't notice him. I'll just, I'll just hang out. Right. Yeah, you just hang out. And you're going to give us the updates because no one that has a cell phone would actually still be dressed in a glad bag. <laughs> True. All right? All right. Can you I've handle lost, this, Jeannie? I've, I've, I've lost everything but my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and my cell confidence. <laughs> All right. You guys head on downstairs. No problem. All right, in. Ronnie, let's go ahead and make our wagers. How much do you think Billy in the glad bag is going to bring in? He brought in 10 on his own. I say he's going to bring in $26 in a glad bag. Really? Either that or he's just going to look like a complete idiot. Yeah, I'm going to go even lower. I'll go seven. I don't. I think he'll get seven bucks. I don't think this is going to go over as big as just the straight off mentally challenged panhandling. Check it out. All right, Mikey D is going to tell us about the battle of the bands that Rory's supposed to be telling us about. But first, let's go out to the twice divorced uh, ham handed maniac. It's Billy Staples. Nice. He's out on the street in a glad bag, seeing how much he can make begging. How tired were we when we thought this was a good idea? It was this morning. Billy Staples. No, it's Ant Man. I think guys. Oh, that's right. We oh. gave the phone to Ass Man. <laughs> oh, I'm oh sorry. God. I should have known. My phone guy should have wrote that up. Right, so Ass Man should be the name on the screen. Right, or Genie Bob. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, give the phone to Billy, would you? Uh, no, he, he, someone, someone's talking to him right now. Who? He, he, Billy's working him. Some guy. Well, just, tell no him he has a, just tell him he has a call. <laughs> <laughs> you there in the glad bag. <laughs> Genie oh, Bob, he, hand he, him he, the effing phone. Jeannie Bob, take take the phone to Billy Staples. Yeah, hold it. Or are you going back no. in your bottle? Actually, it's the Billy. Guy's who's giving him clothes. Guy's actually giving him clothes. Give him the phone. All right, hold on a second. No. Billy, he's yelling. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm hearing some thank I yous. Oh. Billy. Yay. Yeah. Assman's blowing this here. What exactly is happening? Well, I just had, uh, I'm up to about almost $3. Or three. Yeah. I just had a gentleman come by. He gave me some change, and then he came back and offered to give me some clothes from his duffel bag. Oh, that's really nice, man. Yeah. What did brought... you get? Is he that big that your clothes? He had, a pair of stre he had a pair of stretch sweatshorts, which I refused. I, was, I wanted a T-shirt. <laughs> you know, beggars shouldn't be choosers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Tell what, boys? Billy, what's going on there? I know. I just had a gentleman come up and put 50 cents in my cup. Why would he say, tell the boys I said hi? I guess he must be uh, listening. Hi, right, Billy. Yeah. What an idiot he is. He has to ruin everything we try. Billy. Yeah, what's up? Would you make sense, please, for one second? Okay. What's going on? Let's hear you do your gimmick. Okay, hold on. Bear some change, please. What's up? Wait, no, just bear some change. Anybody? Explain the fact that you're in a glad bag. Oh, please help me out, please. Somebody spare a little change. Did he say he's cold? Did anybody <laughs> spare some change? In this heat. <laughs> 90 degrees outside yeah, I can't at 930, and he's saying he's cold. I made a huge mistake of just pitching a bit. To Billy. Here is exactly what he's doing. He's wearing a glad bag. He has no clothes underneath. He has a cup. He's trying to explain to people that he has no clothes, that he has no, that he's homeless. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He won't do it on the air. Billy. Billy. Help me out, please. I have, I, I need a place to stay tonight. Please help me out. Billy. Please help me out. I don't like being homeless. Please help me. Please have pity on me. Thank you. 
Please help me out with the change. Well, you'd think it would be the clothes Please issue we'd be clothes. selling. Billy. Please help me out with some change. Try and get on the phone with him and explain that it's a radio bet and it should be uh, not redundant. That it should All right. be funny. He has to sh shake it up. Well, let me go back to Billy Staples out on the street. Hey, Billy, you're on the air. How much have you collected so far? Billy's still begging Anybody? in his glad I bag. I don't want to live on the street. Billy, you with us? He's begging for an I Love New York t-shirt. I'd love to get a sweaty homeless update. So we know at least he's still begging. So here's the thing. We told him not to be redundant. Right. And what is he? Redundant. Unless that's redundant me answering that. Let's just cut him out. Billy, even if you can't hear us, that's it for you on the show for a while. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous to try. 877-692-1027. Here's Sean. He saw Billy out there. Sean, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Sean. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, buddy. Uh, I just went by. Uh, when Billy's not on the phone, he doesn't do anything. He looks like he's just some kind of bar promo. I wa uh, are you near him now? Yeah, I was the guy who ran up and dropped the change in and said, tell the boys I said hi. All right, All right. How, how far away are you from him? Uh, right now, I just had to, I'm, I'm in my car. I had to go around the block. I'm on, uh, 56 by Carnegie. So, when he's not on the air, he's not doing crap? Oh, no, he's not doing nothing. He just he's looks got like... got the he... guys huddled around him. They're talking. They're goofing off. All right. Hold on, all right? Let so, me... he's just out there cutting the fool, really. Yeah. Hanging out, making it look like a big silly scoop. Cutting the fool. I know that's him. Take your thumb off there, Wonder Boy. Take your big thumb off there. Hey, Billy? Dude. Billy. Dance man. Get the phone to Billy. Right. Please, I'm in a garbage bag. Can you help me out with the change? Hello? Billy. Yeah. Uh, we heard uh, from the guy who gave you money that when you're on the when you're not on the air, you're not doing anything. You're not oh, doing you're your act. Oh, no, I'm doing it big time. I got a whole pocket full of change here. That you're just laughing and joking with ass man. Not at all. Not at all. Every well, time I laughed, somebody pulled me over to the car, weighed five bucks at me, and then took off and said, psych. That's how I feel about your career right now. <laughs> psych. Boy, that joke never gets old for me. <laughs> yeah. Are you going yeah, to everyone... stay out there to the end of the show, Billy? All right. What's that? Mm-hmm. Good luck by the end of the show. We'll see although, what you get. Although we're not going back to you. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll probably nor get the update you, tomorrow. Nor letting you know what, take the other trash bag and uh put all of his stuff in it and put it out in the street. <laughs> and see if he finds that. That'll be it. Uh, as sooner or later you just have to say enough. You just have to say that's enough. Hey, uh Tom, you're on run of us. Hello, Tom. Hi, how you doing? I hey. just want to thank you guys for taking them off. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, there we go. We tried. We give you what you want. <laughs> Sorry, Fuzzy and I are trying to cover eight hours a day and thought maybe someone on the staff would help us. That they could step up to the plate. All right, that's another one done, Ronnie. That's only four? That's only four out of ten this week. I don't know. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Was that Billy? Was that Billy? Hello? Billy? That kind yeah, of sounded yeah. like that sounded like Billy. I'm still down here, still collecting. Billy, we're gonna stay on for an extra hour, okay? Uh, so we'll be right back to you. All right, we're running fast. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go home for two minutes <laughs> and come back, and we'll be back here at 10 a.m. for the midday show. Hit up some lasagna for me. I'm starving. We'll be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Right after the Pharrell man. How can I be the man, the man, the man when you're shaking up? What do I have to say? This is not a bit. What do I have to say?
okay? This is not a bit. The person you're trying to reach has a back covered in moles. Please try your call again.